What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. This is episode 266. Today, my guest is seldom seen. Uh, Before we get into the podcast, I would like to give a shout out to our sponsors for today's episode, Post Baseball Academy, uh, currently looking for uh, 14 and under AA players for local and two to three travel tournaments for the spring and summer season. And they do have their own indoor and outdoor facility located there in Post, Texas. So you can go over there and practice and learn the great sport of baseball from my father, Roy Perez, at 806-474-9565. That's a great way to, uh, that's a way to contact him and get a hold of him if you have a kid and you want to put him in the program. And like I said, learn the great American sport that is baseball. Uh, seldom seen. He's a good guy, man. We had a good, we had a good. Very interesting, fun time talking to him, and he's got a wild life. And in the time he's been here, the 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 stories are crazy. And uh, I know in, during the podcast, we he said that uh, his album is coming out January thirty first, but as of right now, I believe it is February twenty sixth when his album Hard Times comes out. So if you want to check that out when it does come out, please do that. Yeah, other than that, man, we had a good, we had a really good time. So I hope you enjoy the episode. If you want to support the podcast, a great a great way. It's free and easy is to subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, or hit a, or subscribe to us on like Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Rate, review, comment on the posts, share it with your friends, tell them about it, or you can or you can support us on Patreon, Patreon dot com slash Snake Pit Studios. Uh, we have a one dollar tier for Conversation Pit, and we are posting weekly episodes. This now we're putting um guests on, so it's. We're uh, expanding our music and having a little bit more fun with it. So if you want to check that out as well, patreon.com slash snakebitstudios. And that, hope you guys enjoy the episode. Thank you. One love. Are you ready, man? Hell yeah. Ricky. Yes, sir. Ricky D. Yes, sir. Dude, you got you to gotta forgive me because <laughs> these next few weeks I have so many different, honestly, Ricky's coming on. Like Rick, Ricky, R-I-K-K-I, <laughs> like different guys. So I get a little confused, but... You're in the house, man. Thanks for coming along. Hell yeah. You brought some chew. I've been looking forward to this all fucking day. Bradley, you want some? Hell no. Come on, <laughs> How you been, though, man? You been all right? Man, I'm, I'm all right, man. You're, you're there a little bit everywhere. Um, between uh, working two jobs and a silversmith apprenticeship and a hip-hop project and a, another band project, a four-year-old, four dogs, like... God damn, bro. <laughs> so thank you for coming here, man. Yeah, Fuck. Yeah, man. Yeah. You're busy, man. Busy. Yes, sir. Keep me out of trouble, though. Yeah. Uh, that's up for debate, but for the <laughs> most part, man. We... Uh, shit. So you're not a, uh, no disrespect, you're not a Texas boy. No, sir. Where are you from? Uh, well, I was originally born in Washington State, and uh, I moved to uh, Montana when I was a little kid, and... Uh, I've bounced around a whole lot and I've lived in nine or 10 of the different States. Um, <clears throat> been to 47 of the 50. Damn. So I've, I've been around the, the country a bit and I, I blew into West Texas with the rest of the trash and ended up fucking <laughs> putting roots in. So, Oh yeah. I don't know if I can say the F word. Uh, say whatever you want. Okay. Man. All right. I don't know if this is it's up to you, whatever you want, but, uh, <clears throat> so you've been all around a little bit. Other than this great state, which one's your favorite? Tennessee. Oh, I want to go there. Tennessee. I really want to go there. Uh, Louisiana. Louisiana's beautiful as well, but there's just something about Tennessee with the mountains and, and I mean, there's lakes and, and rivers and, and, I mean, there's just so much to it. And it's, it's a very beautiful state, but um, Vermont in late autumn was also really beautiful. The one way up there near New way York? Way the fuck up there, yeah. God damn, yeah. Man. So what are you doing bouncing around, man? Man, um, so really, uh, you know, kind of grew up in a, I don't know if you'd call it a nomadic family. Um, when I was a, a kid, I guess we'll, we'll start off there. Yeah, start there. Uh, my biological dad ended up uh, doing some shit. Him and another guy broke a dude out of work release make a really long story short broke a dude out of work release and they got high on on dope whatever it was i'm sure it was a mixture or whatever and this was back in the early 90s and they were uh they broke dude out of work release he wanted to get a six pack of beer they went to get the beer uh 
they uh, ended up killing the lady because she wouldn't sell him the beer. It was too early and a bunch of crazy shit happened from there, there. But, uh, yeah, uh, dad ended up going to prison. My mom had remarried like long before this. And, and I was raised by, a, a another gentleman that adopted my brother and I, Okay. but, uh, and had my sister later on, but because of essentially what happened roundabout, it got my parents to move out of state because my dad was rolling with some really bad dudes at the time. And it was some bad shit. And, uh, yeah, uh, the the dude that killed the lady is actually trying to get out of prison right now, uh, claiming that uh, you know he's done his time or whatever. But you know, I'm I'm pretty much one for a lot of clemency, but I say keep him locked up because the long term effects on something like that are more than just <coughs> local, you know. Yeah. You know? But anyways, man, we grew up in Montana. We had a little campground and. Uh, uh my adoptive dad ended up dying of cancer when i was 10 and then we just kind of bounced around after that about 17 i just kind of split stopped going to school started working in a tattoo shop uh tried to get into the navy because i i did some cadet work with the navy through some like uh like civil air patrol they have the the naval sea cadets which is like a a, a junior 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 type weekend thing to get you involved in and i wanted to get in the navy couldn't get in the navy tried the other military route didn't work out uh played music pretty much my whole life um what'd you play i started off playing drums my brother got a uh, a drum set for christmas when he was a kid before i was born and i don't remember him ever really taking a, a liking to it so I just started jamming on the drums and uh, anything I could really ever get my hands on, really. Uh, I, when it comes to musical instruments, I know my way around a little bit, but I'm I'm no way like, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, talented, I guess. I, I've got my, my own little bit that I do, but I've always just kind of played my own stuff, like covering some people's stuff. I've never really been able to retain it, but I've been able to write stuff, if that oh, makes sense. Okay. Hell yeah. So, so you've been playing your whole life? A little bit. I got a guitar at like 11, 12, 13, somewhere in there. And then my uh, grandma got me lessons and it started there. And I started playing in a band in high school, then landed with a band called Blacktop Demon uh, at the time. They're now called uh, Juliet Tango. But that Joe, the lead singer, man, he's he's kind of a a legend in his own right, and uh, I'd love to get him down here because he man, let me make a documentary on him. But his uncle, uh, this is how I ended up getting to Texas. I've been through Texas, but how I ended up like coming to Texas and falling in love with Texas was with Joe and uh, shout out Joe Ty and uh, uh, his uncle had a, to do with twin liquors the liquor store so they had like an end with all the liquor distribution so we started hitting south by southwest that's my little only state i've got tattooed on these texas and i'm not even from here <laughs> but uh what year were you going to south by southwest uh first year is 2009 how was it back then dude just the other fucking a few nuts. podcasts ago i was talking about it with, fucking nuts yeah was i was amazing. talking because me and um <clears throat> me and this other guy we caught it when it was starting to fade into corporate. Right. You know, when it got real right, fucking gay. Right. I caught it, like, when I first went, maybe 2016, it was a little, it was raw. Yeah. And then it just got washed by money and all that shit. Like so, way. in 09, it was, was it kind of new at that point? Nah, it's been around. It's been around? It's been around since, like, the 80s. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, I didn't know that, but it was fucking crazy at that point. Man, it was it was one of the craziest times of my life. Um, let's see if I get this thing to light. This thing's super fucking dry. Probably not gonna work out, but we'll try. Um, uh, anyways, um, some of the best shows I've ever played. Some of the the nicest people that you'd ever meet. Some of the craziest people you'd ever meet. Uh. Ended up getting into a fight inadvertently with the largest human being I think I've ever seen in my life. His name was Red. 
and uh, we were out back partying. They had this little area on 6th Street where we'd set up, and they don't even let you do street shows anymore. We would just straight set up oh, on the street shit. and take over, like, guerrilla style. I'll, I'll show you some pictures here in a little bit, but... Um, there's fucking things that are going to work out, I don't think. It's pretty dry. But uh, anyways, um, he picked me up one-handed and threw me across the parking lot. And I remember just being airborne, like, shit, this is going to hurt when I come down. And uh, Joe came out of the shadows and Joe's a pretty big dude. We're about the same, same height, but at the time he probably had about 120 pounds on me, just sheer muscle. He's a, uh, oh, who did he, he did, I want to say Brian Johnson Academy, Jiu Jitsu up in, I could be wrong. It's been a long time, but he was with a real reputable uh, Jiu Jitsu. He could fight. Now, oh uh, shit! I remember him looking up at this dude red and I had my pistol on me at the time and I racked one in the chamber because I thought like this is it like I'm gonna have to hopefully this will take him down I mean this, Holy. Is, like, this dude was huge and you're taller than me so the guy yeah, was, was taller than you yeah and I'm I'm like looking Holy up to him shit. and uh <clears throat> his partner that was with him breaks a bottle off and starts waving the the, the broken edge around like this I'm like what the fuck's going on and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Red just starts yelling in a Jamaican accent. <laughs> I murder fools. Like, boy, 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 boy. I killed a fool. I murdered a fool. And the whole energy oh. of the crowd went from like, holy shit, this is so crazy to like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this dude was just like trying to whoop this dude's ass. And now he's yelling in a Jamaican accent. And he's like seven foot two at least. And he was guess his mom was from Arkansas and dad was from Jamaica, got the whole backstory, ended up guess he went to the feds for some stolen, stolen firearms. But we had a in with a tattoo shop, shout out to Robert down in Austin. He put us on um, and we'd play behind the tattoo shop, like off in a little side area right there. That was right on sixth street, but that's, that's long gone now. But uh, yeah, man, it was it was wild. I watched it. We were going to see Flogging Molly on St. Patty's at midnight. Watched a dude oh, yeah. fall off of a, a a sidewalk, and he he tried to like land like this. He landed like this, but his body kept going, and both arms just like that just broke. Compound oh. fractures on both arms. Dude pushes himself up. Total frat bro move. He goes, it's all right, bro. I'm fucking fine, bro. I'm fucking fine. Walks off, arms both just dangling. And Joe's here. My brother Christopher is here. And like the whole crowd, like one of those like Steve-O fucking moments, like, oh, damn. Like everybody stopped. And it's fucking fine, bro. I'm fine. Like the power of alcohol is a motherfucker. Yeah. It's some wild shit, man. Yeah, South by was a fun time. Um unfortunately you have to get like permits to be able to do any kind of like thing on the street and uh i was going to try to smoke this but it's it's like falling apart so r.i.p you need a humidifier huh? yeah i i had it out too long it was a prop and i should have should have done something with it. But <laughs> anyways yeah that's just what i mean though like it's <clears throat> kind of gay now like it's probably for reasons but there's too many steps to do things now right it's, a lot of that. I'm Aust- sure it's fun though. A lot of the Austin culture really has died down. Uh, for New Year's Eve, we went to go see Gary Clark Jr. Uh, at the Moody Theater. Damn right. And uh, <clears throat> before that, we went to the Comedy Mothership on Sixth Street. And man, Sixth Street's just not what it used to be. I mean, they yeah, they still close it off, and you can still walk around, but the people are just so different. Like that that Austin soul is is you know is burned out. And it's gone now. No, it, more, it no used, more mud in the blood. Well, man. it used to be like the clubs, like you would have like blues, country, reggae. There'd be like a punk, you know, you, you know, a punk venue. Like it just, it was all over the place. And now like there's so many places that are closed and it's just not, it's not full like the way it used to be. And then the people, it's, it's kind of sketchy now. People were really sketchy over there now. It used to be like where Austin, I, you could walk around and and you would feel like you're in somewhat of a safe city. Now it's just sketchy. So when you were going there in 09, where were you coming from? What state? Uh, so, <laughs> uh, dude named Clint uh, let us uh, borrow his Prius. It was like a brand new Prius. 
We rigged a trailer up to it. We borrowed some dude's big band uh, trailer. Shout out to Doc Nacho. He's in the house. What's up, pup? How are you? <laughs> Guess he was making noise out there. Uh, so we were we were south of Seattle. Um, God damn. <clears throat> yeah, we were south of Seattle when the voyage started. Uh, we borrowed the the Prius. Borrowed with the guys that we were gonna take it to Portland, Oregon for the weekend. Well, Joe, he's a collector of cars. He had a General Lee. And he had a, uh, he's got a really couple badass old Mopars, but he was into cop cars. I think he might have a cop car or two left, but at one time he had a whole fleet of these old decommissioned cop cars. And uh, anyways, uh, we take off in this borrowed Prius and he's like, hey, Clint, we're going to take us to Portland for the weekend. Take one of the cop cars. No problem, but I need it back by Monday. Yeah, sure. Okie doke. Oh, <laughs> and we fucking split off to Austin. And uh, next thing I know, we're stopping in Wyoming buying fireworks. And next thing I know, those fireworks are going off in a firework war inside this borrowed Prius. Uh, we had Denver had a Denver omelet. We had the trailer on it. A fun fact, I don't know about the new Priuses, but those old Priuses in the owner's manual and multiple times in big bold letters says, do not tow. Oh shit. Ever. <laughs> and so we're towing this trailer along full of van gear. We're coming down the other side of the mountains, like coming into Nebraska from Denver. And I'm driving and all the lights come on. I'm like, what the fuck? And Joe's looking through the owner's manual. Again, borrowed car. And uh he's like, Hey, if this light's on and this light's on, we're cool. But if this light's on, this light's on, this light's on, and this light's on, we're fucked. And he's like, Which ones are on? I said, All the above. <laughs> he's like, oh fuck. So we pull over uh, the the pigtail from the trailer had unraveled and was fucking shortened out <laughs> oh, and was fucking with the onboard electronics and the Prius. So we got that sorted out. Uh, get on down the road. We finally get to Texas. I drove all the way from Denver to outside of Waco uh, straight. Those Priuses get great fucking gas mileage. So we was hardly like 15 stopped. hours. Uh, fuck, I don't remember. Uh, uh, thereabout. I remember it was dark when I started and it was about afternoon when I finished and they peeled me out of the car. And I remember I was kind of like stuck like this. And I told <laughs> them, uh, I said, we're not stopping until we get to Austin. They said, deal. And I had a couple tall cans in the back and I was drinking them and I had to take a piss. And I was like, man, guys, I got to pee. And they're like, no, nope, you said we're not stopping. It's like, all right, whatever. Fuck Are we you. talking beer? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I had a big Budweiser tall can. And I start pissing in the beer and sorry about this, Joe, I got to tell it, but I went to throw the can out the window and I don't know if you've ever been rolling down the road and you go to flick the cigarette out the window, but it doesn't exactly go out the window. <laughs> I've been on the receiving end of that. Yeah. Well, anyways, yeah, th that tall can of Budweiser piss uh, did that exact thing and somehow miraculously did not hit me, but hit everybody else in the band. And again, in this Prius. So <laughs> Those are those are tiny cars, right? Yeah, bro. Four grown men in this Prius. Yeah, it was fucking something else. So we, we hit, we get to Texas. We do the thing. I split off, go to Louisiana. I guess when they brought it back, it was just like wheeling in, like lights were on, fucking the brakes didn't work. Clint was no longer friends with us after that. <laughs> I never really met the guy. I think I met him, met him once in passing, but I, it was one. Okay, I don't, yeah, I, sure. I don't mean to be like, <laughs> it's kind of his fault. He let you guys borrow oh, the man. car. It's kind of his fault for trusting you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. But so this is when you fell in love with Texas. That's when I fell in love with the man. What'd you like about it, man? Let's hear it. I love Texas. We're about to secede, man, I guess. I don't know Fuck. what's going on right Yay. now. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, yeah, Governor Greg Evans not one to roll away from a challenge. No. So. <laughs> not one to roll down. Hey, I respect it right now, kind of. Hey. You know, I'm I'm happy to be where I'm at. I'm not knocking it, and I feel kind of like Davy Crockett right now. There's a lot of shit I don't agree with, but there's worse shit going on in our country than what we've what we've got dealing with right now. I don't know if that makes sense in my opinion, uh, but I, I really think that we just need to mind our own yards and you know mind our own business and may, maybe just not politics for a while. Take a couple of years off. That's what I know? say. The Amish have Rumspringer, you know, they go out in the world, figure it out, you know, let the geriatrics go to the home, you know, I mean, let's let the young people figure it out, you know, uh, that's my say on it. You ever been out to those Amish communities? I've been you, through it. Yeah. I've never like stopped it, but I've seen the buggies and stuff. Uh, it's yeah. a trip. I've they'll, never they'll been out still, east. I want to go out there. 
Uh, the the three states I haven't been to is New Hampshire, Maine, and Minnesota. We were supposed to play Minnesota, but the the venue ended up uh, had a fire marshal violation, so we ended up staying two nights in Iowa and then went to Green Bay the next night, which was pretty. So rad. you've been to Alaska? Yeah. How was that? It was all right. Not my thing. My mom and my grandpa. My grandpa was kind of. I, I don't know. I've never really heard the full story on it. He was connected somehow with people in Nevada and then went from Nevada to Alaska and had some shit to do against the Teamsters because he had a construction company and a cab and a trucking company. And anyways, he opened up the yellow cab in Anchorage. My mom was born there. My brother was born there, but they moved back to Washington state and that's where I was born. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's kind of there. Yeah. That area, right? All the fuck over. All yeah. over the place. So. Fuck. And you've been to Hawaii? Yep. How is that? I'd love to go back. I only did Honolulu, and it's kind of a tourist trap. I'd like to get out and, you know, like actually, Real life yeah, actually see Hawaii. But the the locals, in my opinion, were really, really cool, as long as you just weren't being, you know, a dipshit tourist. You know, just... Just like anywhere, huh? Yeah, just respect the, you know, respect your surroundings. Know where you're at. It's just like... Fuck, oh, dude. So you just live this free... <laughs> Sort of cowboy lifestyle, huh? Yeah, it's been for, pretty wild for a long it's been time. Pretty fucking wild. So. Was it all? What are like? Was it dangerous? You get yourself in some. Man. Was there drugs, alcohol? What was oh, the yeah. life like? Oh man? yeah, oh yeah. Um, I I dabbled in uh, the sales of illicit substances more than more than I care to admit. Uh, at one time, I was moving a, a lot of a lot of herb. This was before Washington was recreational. Uh, moved a, a, a lot of other stuff as well. How old are you? Uh, 36. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, kids younger than me, I'm 27, don't really realize, like, again, I caught the back end of it with weed. Like, it was illegal. Right. And it back was in bad. My day, son, it was a felony. Well, like, the culture <laughs> shifted, though. Right. Like, it was culturally, like, weed's bad. Like, right. Felony for weed. I mean, I guess still here it's a felony, but you know, it's like yep, I've got one out of Louisiana so, for that. Yep. Manufacturing with intent to distribute a schedule well, they're, one. They're well, Louisiana over there, right? I think yeah. that's medical, right? It's medical now. Yeah, well, I'm saying no their sense. laws are nuts. Yeah, um, time. I've got like two more years to uh, get it expunged. And because I was only one time offender, never reoffended, that was part of the paperwork that after the, the 10 years of the suspended sentence that I'd be able to get my shit expunged. So, so technically you're a felon right now? Yeah. He, yep. Is that going to cost money? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so and during all this, did you leave the country? Uh, I've only been to Canada. Canada. I've been to Canada. I've got family up in Canada oh. as well. I was so. going to talk shit. But never mind. <laughs> Canada's pretty wild, man. Uh, uh, when I grew up in, in Washington, where I was at, I was probably like, I don't know, it'd be like driving from here to Dallas. It'd be like driving from where I was at to Vancouver. And you only oh, got to be 19 to drink in, in Canada. Oh, and shit. I don't know if they've changed it, but I'm sure they haven't. But at the time, it was still 19. So that was like the thing. You turn 19. Come on, boys. We're going to the border. You know? Just, yeah, man. That'd be uh, fun. Yeah, at the time, the exchange rate was pretty good, so you'd have some fun, man. And uh, I had a really cool New Year's. Got really weird at the end of the night, but what's the New Year's without it getting weird, you know? So, damn, is this uh, your water or is mine? No, that's uh, oh, look at that. Well, like a damn piece of beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> damn, so you just been all over, all kinds of life experiences, huh? Yeah. How so? How'd you end up here in Lubbock, Texas? Man, so I was. Oh man, I'd been through Lubbock. I hadn't been to Lubbock. Uh, my 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 partner. Uh, yeah, he's like my brother-in-law, I guess. He, Alicia, my other half, and my my daughter's mom are my my partner at home. Uh, her brother is uh one of my best friends, and. Uh, Anyways, uh, he uh, he was out here. I was in Shreveport, and uh, anyways, he had moved out here because uh, his dad worked out. Their dad worked out here, and so they they'd moved out here. So your baby's mom, her brother, 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the whole family's out. Their whole family's out here. So, oh, okay. Um, we got together, man, and and uh, things were getting kind of wild in Louisiana at the time, and uh, I figured, fuck it, I don't got any warrants in Lubbock, so let's go. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, man. I don't currently have any warrants. I'm I'm a free and clear man, but yeah. Just escaping the law, so you yeah. Didn't. That's why uh, January thirty first this year will be the first year that I've been totally off paper. Uh, I caught a felony in Arizona in twenty eleven, ran on it, never went back. Uh, and then uh, through touring, ended up doing a little jail time in Idaho, and uh, some shit happened. Did some jail time in Washington spent time in here lubbock county's fine facility on some stupid shit and then louisiana as well but uh yeah no i, I finally took care of everything I had to go all over the country last year and, and like do time in those places no or? no I, uh so like times had changed in arizona so they were pretty much essentially just wanted to get me off their docket i got caught with a little bit of dope like it was like a 20 bag of dope and I had taken care of part of it and then ran and then taken care of part of it because I wasn't clean at the time and I was just running around and didn't know what the fuck I was doing and, and uh, you know, got time to man up. Uh, I wanted to take care of it sooner, but I got caught with 0 0.01 milligrams of a vape cartridge down in Jones County and that cost me three years of probation that I had to take care of for fucking 0 0.01 milligrams of a vape cartridge. So, yeah, Texas don't play on that shit. Uh -uh. Which is very unfortunate because uh, it doesn't need to be that way, and they're they're pointing the the cannons at the wrong people. Yeah, so, damn. Yeah, so you're and clear. You cleared it all. Yeah. Fucking hey, man. Had, had warrants in Idaho, Washington, California, and Arizona. <laughs> it's all drugs. Uh, some drugs, mostly driving on suspended. Oh. And I just I took off and you're flying fuck and yeah. Damn, bro. Yeah. I just got my license back last year. I've been driving like ever since I've got my license. I just lost it a few years after I got it. And just, just like fuck off, whatever. You know, what's a license, you know? Fuck you. Playing it around, I guess. You're like a renegade, dog, damn. <laughs> yeah. Gets... There's some Modelo right here. I'm good. I'm good on these. Here, catch. Fuck yeah, dude. So you got it all. Damn it. Got it, got it all taken care of. He's gonna get drunk because of the beers. <laughs> what have you, what have you learned? What have I learned? Hold on, in in these times that you've been, I'm sorry, you've met a lot of fucking crazy people, probably. Yeah. Done a lot of crazy shit. What have you learned about people? Mm. What, is, what has it taught you about people, man? That's one of the things I'm like jealous of because I've been here my whole life, and I haven't really got to experience people outside of here. I don't I, I don't know if this is going to make sense or if it might be a little too deep, but I've been kind of doing a lot of analyzing within myself and, and kind of asking myself that same question. I really honestly don't think anybody really knows what's going on. Like nobody knows what the fuck's going on. Just, just in general? In general. Mm -hmm. Like the, the whole fucking big scheme of things. We're yeah. in that fart in the big scheme of things, but you know, Time is important because that's our, our time sheet. That's our clock in, you know, that our job is important because that's our house, because it's our structure. You know what I mean? We're just, we're, we're caught up that we just don't even know what the fuck's going on. We're globally as a population just pushed into a cattle shoot. You know what I mean? And, yeah, dude, and, that's why I kind of want to travel because I feel like you get to see that. You can. You look from the outside. Yeah, and and the beautiful thing about our country is, you, you know, you don't need a passport to go, you know, here to Puerto Rico, Bahamas, uh, I believe Belize. It all just depends. But our country is built up of so many different micro nations. You can't carry a prejudice with you. And I learned this the hard way. You can't carry a prejudice with you and be a good traveler because, you know, uh, you won't be able to take fully in the culture and what, appreciate it. What prejudices it. did you have? It just any kind of apprehensive to anything different. Uh, not exactly like uh, uh, not 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 any kind of 
any kind of racial anything that that's definitely not my bag man <clears throat> but just like a preconceived notion if you will of like southern people or you know people from this place yeah shit yeah, like that yeah and uh you know um just i'm bad at that by the way yeah you just <laughs> you gotta be able to if you really want to immerse yourself in it you know you just you have to embrace the local culture get off the beaten path don't go to the fucking applebee's you know go go hit that greasy spoon go hit that mom and pop go hit that vintage shop you know you never know what you find you know and you'll meet the weirdest people in the weirdest of places and they're set in their motion for their own time but for hell all we know it could be just part of the greater simulation you know part of the fuck yeah dude you know, fuck. he's seen a lot of faces of yeah man you know shook yeah. a lot of hands it's it's been I've been very blessed, and if something was to happen tonight and I don't wake up tomorrow, I you know there's definitely things that I want to see and do, but I'm very thankful and blessed to be where I'm at, to be able to share it with others. You so know? you, when you were touring like throughout, what kind of hold on I got <laughs> this fucking dog. Game on. So when you were like touring all that, uh, what kind of music? Uh, so Blacktop Demon, now Juliet Tango, they, uh, they're a, a little bit of, uh, uh, rock and roll, rockabilly, country, American kind of roots, but with the, uh, most, I, I toured with Joe, like the most out of anything that I did tour. And then, uh, like the furthest that I went, like miles traveled actually would have been with the uh, Hellbound Glory, and they're they're a country band. Um, Hell yeah! They're currently signed on a um, Black Country Rock Shooter Jennings label. So I've been hearing about this guy yeah. Shooter Jennings. Yeah, man, uh, he got a couple of Grammys and killing it in the producing side of things. So, it's... what kind of music did you grow up listening to? Were you? everything what was your influences everything man um a lot a lot of old country definitely a lot of old country um with my biological dad for the short amount of time that the like i was in his life before he went to prison i had a uh, weekend visits every other weekend and that's when he kind of remembered to show up but uh it was always like ACDC, D.O. Rush was one of his favorites. Uh, he did a, he'd go get all fucked up at the bar and leave me in the car and he'd fucking come out to the car and he'd be too fucked up to drive. So he'd put me on his lap, like four years old. And he'd, he'd work the pedals because he had a oh, Camaro shit. with a four speed. Oh, he'd work the pedals and I'd drive home. God, no. Different time back then. That's what I was about to say. I've heard <laughs> these things. I think my mom told me she lived like that yeah. a little bit. Yep. Like her and her siblings would be in the car while they were at the bar. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, you man. big on the the Seattle bands? Man, um, it, it really depends. The their whole Nirvana thing. I was I was into them when I was younger, but it kind of got played out for me. Uh Alice in Chains, Chris Cornell has a like a really, really special spot with me for sure. Um one of my dear friends. R.I.P. Mikey, he's the one that really, really got me into everything. He was in a band called Fits of Depression, and they were, they are a very, very uh, underrated and um, just kind of misinformed cornerstone of that Northwest music scene. Like they toured with Kurt and the Melvins, and I mean, I've I've got a the record that came out after Mikey passed away, fucking fentanyl. Um, but uh anyways uh in that record man there was they they toured with rage against the machine oh um, shit mikey was part of alistair lob which was dave grohl and his sister before the foo fighters became the foo fighters um sex in the city had uh their movie featured fits of depression on their opening credits can you screen record it again <clears throat> it's off right now oh shit but yeah, uh, like you flip open that record and it's it's pretty cool because uh, a couple of old bands that I played in were like they had show flyers like from all the different bands that they played with and yeah, Mikey passed away and a few years ago and <clears throat> that really really hurt but you know he he 
live that that life, man. You can only party hardcore like that for so long. For you gotta you. get you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Ever heard of an old old Seattle band called the Sonics? Mm-hmm. Yep. You into them? Yeah, they're, they're like that. That's like old old time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Strict Nine, right? They got that Did song. you Trick- Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Were you trying to show me them? No, I don't think I've ever showed Somebody you the Sonics. Me. Somebody has a shirt or something. I don't remember. The Supersonics were the, the team before. They were the Oklahoma City Thunder. Yeah, I remember the Sonic. That's Kevin Durant. Yeah. Hell yeah. A and D. So you have... um. How did you... When you get here, who are you connecting with? musically who you like the scene any of that man um <clears throat> so <clears throat> this is this is where it kind of gets dark um try i i'm trying not to let it consume me because it's uh it's something that's definitely um made me who i am today but uh I came out to Lubbock because shit was getting way too hot in Shreveport uh, between <clears throat> uh, another individual and myself. Uh, November 25th, 2013, was sitting in my house and uh, was selling a little bit of weed and was supposed to meet up with a friend of a neighbor, cousin of a neighbor, somebody. And uh, anyways, ended up in a shootout. And uh, I got shot four times. I shot my neighbor and it was just, it was a fucked up ordeal. <laughs> you got shot. Yeah. Oh, where? Uh, three times in my, my arm. I still got the bullet in my shoulder here and I still got my one in my elbow and then a, a, with a 22 and then a 40 caliber through my leg. Oh. And I went, that one clipped my femoral artery. And I, I fucking bled to death and yeah, it was a wild experience, man. Anyways, uh, the individual that, uh, uh, one of them that robbed me, uh, he ended up robbing a girl a couple days later, smashed her face in with a brick, and uh, he ended up getting caught through my case, and I ended up going to college to that mass communications and broadcasting with the girl that he had robbed. It was just a really, like, wow small world type thing uh he did time in prison gets out of prison he was riding with his cousin the rapper up and coming rapper out of shreveport ratchet life and somebody rolled up next to him and filled them both full of lead killed ratchet life and he got shot the fuck up and so um just a lot of bad blood man people getting killed left and right and some other shit came up between some he said, she said shit. I was like, man, it's it's just a little too hot. I'm going to get out and try something different. And uh, that was uh, between the years of 2013 to 2017 was when I first came out here. I was, I was in between Louisiana and California, Arizona, and here, all over the fucking place. But yeah, uh, fucked me up pretty bad. But <clears throat> I'm uh, learning to let go of it. Because it's a an anchor that I can't carry with me, and uh, would like anger. Yeah, I mean, it's fear. It's, like, what was it? No, I'm not. I, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm just. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> just it's, to... it's definitely not fear because I've got kids. He's got nine, ten, twelve fucking baker's dozen kids. Uh, <clears throat> the streets are gonna get him, one way or the other. Uh, he wants to live that that trap rapper life and and put out and flash his cash and everything. And I learned something a long time ago from an old timer when I was down and he said, you know, there's a time and place for everything. And uh, if you don't significantly change your life and you want to live that lifestyle, I mean, shit, you see it every day, man, fucking. Rapper here killed, rapper there killed, rapper this, rapper that, you know, and, and you don't see country singers getting gunned down every day. You damn sure you don't see opera singers getting gunned down every day. It's trap rappers want to live that fucking lifestyle. Yeah. So he can have it. He can have it. I'm doing my thing. Whatever. If you ever so want did to- it like take you seeing all this, experiencing all this to be like, I'm done with it? 
I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm not trapping anymore. That's what uh, I mean. Like the illegal like, shit. Yeah, that's what I mean. yeah, yeah. I'm just a consumer if, yeah. if on anything, you know. No, no, I just meant living that life. Yeah, no, man. I got kids. I, I work a legitimate job. And, uh, you know, I'm pushing my music, trying to be a positive force for change because I damn sure don't want my kids going through that. You know, I, I as much as, uh, you know, I don't want to see anything happen to those kids you know so it's uh it's just one of those things man I, I i ate some mushrooms and i had a really weird dream when i was in florida on vacation and uh it was kind of weird man like like the debt the debt was settled you know and i just i, I woke up with the feeling of just letting it go I mean, I, I still have the, the trauma getting fucking filled full of bullet holes, but uh, it's something that I'm fighting through every day, you know, and it, it's a, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint, you know, so. Ah, oh, damn, man. I didn't expect to hear that <laughs> shit, dude. So this is all influencing your music, though. So yeah, yeah, you man. Get here. Yeah, yeah. The album's called Hard Times. If you haven't, if you haven't amounted to where we're going to with that, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's yeah. the precipice right. of the album, but. I've been very blessed to get some some very awesome producers and some very very the, some of the most talented people that I've ever met um, on this album on this project. It's a couple of years in the making, but I was dealing with a lot of demons with myself, self confidence issues, drinking issues, things like that. And I finally got to a place. I had a a therapist coming out of rehab. And she was like, you know, you're not putting your music out is you're not doing the world a service. You know, you might be able to help somebody with your music. So, Sounds like it. these yeah. experiences you've gone through. Yeah. It's not your typical <laughs> booty, booty, clap, hose, trap. Rims, nah, but it's, clothes. but it's, it's what, <laughs> what America, I don't know the percentage, but Americans go through that. Right. There's a, probably a group of Americans that are living that or right. that went through that. <clears throat> so. We got to hear it. Fuck, yeah, man. So how would you describe that music? Man, it's, it's, we're kind of all over the place on it, man. Um, <clears throat> I've got, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to do it, but I, I got to do it. I got to, got to drop the names of uh, the people that I've been very, very blessed to work with. And I'm, I'm very, very thankful. Wait, when you drop their names. I know, man. I just, I'm not, I'm not clout chasing. This is just years of, of really, you know, trial and error fucking up and uh you know and trying to put the best foot forward but uh two of my tracks i got uh casey strums on two of the tracks that's uh, jelly rolls guitar player um i've got uh scatterbrains who's done stuff for um uh, struggle jennings he's struggle jennings main producer I was about to ask you about him if you're a fan of Struggle Jennings. Yeah, man, Struggs. It's, it's been Waylon a, Jennings' grandson. He's a rapper. Yeah, he's he's been really really awesome. Is he from around here? No, he's, he's from he's Nashville. Nashville. Yeah, yeah. Um, I met him. So uh, we wrapped up our tour in 2016, <clears throat> and Strug had gotten out of prison. And Yellow Wolf put him on for his first Shout tour. To Yellow Wolf. Hey, I met Yellow Wolf at South by Southwest, speaking of which. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, anyways, uh, uh, I got a hold of Shooter and I was up in Seattle and I was like, hey man, like I saw that, that Strug's coming through town. I'm a really big fan. You know, is there any way he might be able to do something? And he was like, yeah, man, hold on. And uh, he sent me Strug's number. He said, man, you know, I think you guys are going to become fast friends and, and, you know, holler at him. He's waiting to hear from you. And we uh, uh, linked up that night in Seattle. He had to fly back to Nashville to check in. The rest of the tour went, I can't remember if they went to BC first. Or they went, I think they went to Spokane and then to BC and then to Portland. And that's when Strug came back. I met with Strug in Portland and then also went to Eugene with them as well. Shout out Eugene. Um, I've been yeah. there. And uh, they were at the uh, the Wow Hall, I believe is what it was called. Uh, and Yellow Wolf had his uh, breakdown there, and shit got kind of wild. And I left the situation. It was it was nuts. But uh, what was this? Uh, when Yellow Wolf had his his meltdown on stage and destroyed the stage, and went into the fucking mental institution, called the tour off, and 
Oh, shit. It was wild, but his his partner just died, and and I, I don't know what you know he was going through at the time. I've met him in passing a couple times, but I mean, you know, who's who knows what somebody's going through, especially, you know, at a level where you expect to perform, and you know, it, it, a performer at a certain point in time, you're a fucking paid monkey. You know what I mean? Like, play this song, play that song, do it. You know, do this, do that, do this. You know, and it, you got to get up there and you know do it for the people. But I mean, they expect certain things out of it. And, I, and I'm not saying that a, a chimp can do you know that job but i mean essentially you know you get up there you put your all into it you fucking put your heart out on the stage you light it on fire you fucking piss and shit all over it you know i think i kind of plagiarized that from uh possessed from paul james uh conrad but uh yeah <clears throat> i saw that on a little documentary that he was talking about I was like it makes sense man you fucking put it all out there and sometimes it's nobody but their homies and their friends you know and sometimes for two three people and other times, you know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to play in front of a couple thousand and fortunate enough to work shows like I've worked behind the scenes doing show production and work 40, 50,000 shows. I think the biggest I've done is like 53,000 people. Mm -hmm. I've worked festivals where there's hundreds of thousands of people. But I mean, like at one point in time, you know, 50, yeah. that's a lot of just the energy. Of, yeah, just the energy of being there alone, even not even being part of the 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 show you know and just being part of the production is a fucking overwhelming feat um, uh, so struggle jennings is wailing his grandson yeah i <laughs> swear like does wailing have siblings that still live here there's yeah. there's a lot of i jennings swear here. i saw one he looked just like wailing at, at a circle k the other day <laughs> but fat and gray huh. one time i went to Can go I eat I wish uh, I had the balls to say, are you related to Waylon? He looked just like Waylon. Well, uh, one time I went to go eat at a uh, cast iron grill and our waitress was uh, William Jennings' niece. I, I, f I forgot what her name was, but uh, um, I, I, I used to know the owner and he came up. He's like, yeah, that's William Jennings' niece. And uh, we talked a little bit about it. But yeah, there's a lot of Jennings out here, especially there's a lot of them still in Littlefield. Mm hmm Charlie Crockett, uh, I don't know if you saw his story. He went to go meet his brother at the liquor store. We need to go up there. Go meet James, dude. He's cooler than shit. Is that who that is? Yeah. Um, Strug just yesterday, I believe it was, dropped the video for Road I'm On, which was shot in Littlefield. And they uh, James took him out. The, I believe it's the old Jennings house. I, I think that's what Strug told me. Huh. I, I could be wrong, but in the video, uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool. But yeah, they're at the liquor store. I went out there, took a friend out there. I, I kind of make like that that's like a therapeutic trip just to make that little trip out there you know what i mean and just kind of just diddle around you know poke around i love the old just abandoned buildings and shit out there in littlefield so uh when raven was little and she'd go to sleep i just like fuck it we're gonna drive to littlefield cause she'll fall asleep in the car you know and just go tool around and one day i caught james there man he showed me this show me that she's in there touching like a thing that at elvis's autograph in it and he told me that elvis was not big on autographs and she's touching the damn thing and I'm like holy hey, shit. hey you don't touch that and she, he's like oh she's fine she ain't gonna mess nothing up I'm like holy fuck that's all i can think she's gonna knock over something you know like <laughs> here we go you know but great he's a he's a very nice gentleman I'm that's a, his brother yeah james <clears throat> i think i saw that motherfucker yeah he looked just like um, Waylon, does he no nah, he, one of them looks uh doug doug says he goes into rouse every now and then and picks up a few records um, but yeah, I've always wondered like if like Shooter or Struggles ever come out to. So who's Shooter? Shooter is Shooter's his dad. Shooter is what? Shooter uh, is Jesse Coulter and Waylon's son. And his uh, Godfather was Muhammad Ali. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Shooter and Struggle are brothers. They're nephew. Uh, so Shooter is technically uh, Strug's uncle. But, oh, but yeah. they were raised like brothers because uh, they're they're I think like a month apart in age. Uh, have you ever seen Walk the Line? No, the Johnny Cash story. Yeah, yeah no, Shooter plays his dad because yeah, in the apartment. Yeah, because Johnny Cash and uh, Waylon uh, used to be roommates. Uh, there were stories that you, can you let me look what he looks like? There were stories that uh, I get, uh, it was a Shooter Jennings interview. He said he remembers as a as a kid, um, as a kid that Johnny and Waylon would come in. They're all high on pills. And uh, they would start just like cooking, like pancakes and breakfast, and fucking pancake batter would be all over their fucking clothes because they were so high. <laughs> right there, he looks like Waylon. 
Yeah. That's a cool motherfucker right there. Uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, uh, yeah, and it all originated just down the street from here. Yeah, no, that's and good. it's it's kind of wild that that I ended up here, and uh, Joe, he'll he, when he comes through to Austin, he'll make a pilgrimage to Buddy Holly's grave. Like every time, he's a huge Buddy Holly fan. He's like, man, it's kind of crazy that you ended up of all places, love it because you know that's like holy ground to me. And like it's, it's just wild that I ended up here. Yeah, he cool. took us out there last year. Yeah. So for the first time to the museum, I'd already been to the museum. Oh, yeah, yeah. Museum's cool. Hell yeah. Um, w- Willie got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in it, uh, before his performance. He said, I would like to give a shout out and ask the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame to please put Waylon Jennings in because mm-hmm. he played with people like Buddy Holly. I thought he, that was cool. He shouted him out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I forgot about that. Well, you, you, that whole history of everything. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> so you got the album coming out next week? Uh, the 31st. Yeah, yeah we'll try to get this out by the 31st. <laughs> yeah, no, it'll be it, around then. Yeah, it's going to be... Um, uh, 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 the album's going to be out available on the internet and everywhere on uh, the 31st, along with the, my first music video. Uh, the young D the great, he did all the recording, mix and mastering. He also shot the video as well. Uh, we went out to a little old abandoned uh, farmhouse. And, Shout uh, out to him. I like that dude. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we went out to that farmhouse and man, it was like 5 million degrees in there. And I had my little shit set up and he popped the lights on to film the video and the mud daubers and wasps in the walls started waking up and started flying around and so i had wasp wasp spray and we didn't really have official permission to be in the building i don't think like a good old boy a friend of a friend of a friend yeah ain't nobody gonna fuck with you out there you're fine and yeah so it was uh it was a little bit on edge but we we got it done um i'd never seen a mud what are they called mud Mud daubers. I'd right? never seen one until last year. Yeah. They made a little nest in our yard. Yeah. Oh, I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> Nasty little fucker. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. They had a big stinger. Yeah. That would hurt. Have you seen those? Mm-mm. Nasty little fucking things. I don't like bugs like that. Hell no. Yeah. You gotta watch out for that shit. Yeah, dude. So I wanted to ask you about uh, your... What is it called? Your apprenticeship that you have? Silversmithing. Fucking, that's so cool. How'd you get in that? Man, so <laughs> I'd been working at Wrench Apart, uh, the, the wrecking yard out here. Uh, great people. I just, I got tired of the grind of, of dealing with the customers. Like, they've got some really great customers out there, and there's there are some really great people that go out there, but the, the run of the mill uh, people out there, man, they, they come in, they're fucked up, they're tweaking they're drunk i don't care do your thing bro like just sure? don't, yeah don't cut your fucking hand off and bleed all over the place and don't be an asshole when you check out you know and always trying to wheel and deal like brother that's out of, i'm the lowest on the totem i can't help you you know and trying to steal shit and having to be loss prevention at the same time and just man it, it wasn't my scene and that song uh richmond north of richmond came out i'll be here in a few months and uh i uh I, I kind of, kind of lost myself. I was like, you know, what the fuck am I doing? And uh, I just, I, I put in my two weeks notice out there. I said, I can't do this anymore. And I, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. I was, I was trying to get a job with the city, but uh, that ended up not working out, unfortunately. And it would be really cool to work. I was going to work for the parks and rec department here in Lubbock, but hell yeah, they, they just they, bless their hearts, man. They don't, they don't really make all that much money. And it's, uh, I was, I'd be taking a pay loss if I went to work. Yeah, but they don't really so. do much either. Man, did, right. did, did y'all hear about, uh, that parks and rec truck that got stolen and <laughs> turned into like a full on police chase? Yeah. I saw yeah. that. <laughs> I saw that on Facebook. Oh, oh man, wild now, boy. It's like they weren't too busy to keep an eye out on their truck. Right. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, but uh, anyway, so I was doing some soul searching, and I, I hit some classifieds, and this silversmith apprenticeship had came up, 
And it was something that my adopted dad, David, that raised me. It was something he dabbled in and made jewelry. And uh, it's something I've always kind of wanted to do. And when Alicia and I first got together, she cut one of the bullets out of my arm. And uh, I took it to a silversmith in Shreveport, and he made it into a ring. And uh, uh, I asked him if he'd apprentice me then. And he was like, man, I'm not really a teacher. You know, it's uh, not really my bag. And I was like, man, I appreciate you. You know, but hell of a silversmith and are you wearing that ring <sighs> no it's oh. it's her ring oh, it's okay. her ring mm -hmm. uh but yeah she she cut it out of my arm it was, it was a trip but uh uh anyway so i uh found this ad it was kind of a really far out ad um the gentleman that placed it, he's a very eccentric individual as i imagine you'd have can to you say be. the name uh huh can you say the name michael his, his name is Mike. He's just one dude. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, he's a former defense attorney. He's still licensed with Texas, but he was a defense attorney in New Mexico and Texas as well. But he, he learned silversmithing um, from a, an old native gentleman in New Mexico. And, Perfect dude to, to yeah, learn from. Yeah. Huh? And uh, anyways, he was like, man, it really doesn't, you don't, you need patience and you need to have an artistic mind. And I was like, well, fuck, the worst you can say is no. And man, bring you on. And that was the end of August. And I spend, I try to spend at least two or three days a week in there. Um, because I mean, essentially I'm, I'm paying for the apprenticeship through labor and then also through marketing of our product. Can you well. go to his Instagram and we can, you did the little bolo tie, right? Mm -hmm. What is your Instagram? Seldom seen 87. S-C-E-N-E. Yeah, I did that bolo. My my partner Lenny with the Trailer Park Apparel Company. You know that guy who 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 does that? Uh, that's uh, his name's Lenny. He's down in Kerrville. Uh, Trailer oh, Park Kerrville. Apparel Company is his little thing. And seldom. What was it again? Oh, S, 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 S E L D O M S C E N E eighty seven. S E L. Spell it one more time. S E L D O M. Right there. I thought you posted it. Oh, no, it was on my uh, stories. Oh, it was in our messages. Yeah. Yeah, because we were talking about it. Never mind. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought you had posted it. Um, shit, I can. <laughs> <laughs> Just send it to the snake pit. Right, a snake. Ooh, Got you. If you would. Let me see. To your uh, messages? Yeah. Got you. Coming your way. What a what a day to be alive. Let's see here. It's so cool you can bring this stuff up. <clears throat> there it is. Sent to you. It might, yeah, the request because I don't follow anybody on that account. <laughs> mm, or did you send it to my personal? One? It's oh. on Instagram. Yeah. Oh, I, I got you. I got you. Snake Roy. Hold on. I'll send it to that one. Oh, I know a guy. I know a guy who can send it to you. <laughs> So how long have you been doing this? Doing what? This apprentice thing? Uh, I started at the end of August. And this is uh, so, so sweet. Is it hard to do? It's tedious. Mm -hmm. um, everything that I've essentially been working with is just scrap. Um, I just got some actual like pure silver in, but I have to melt it down with copper to be able to make it sterling silver to be able to make it wearable oh you can't uh, just do pure silver it's too soft oh man like, it doesn't take much to sterling it how much is how sterling pure is? is 925 okay that's pure silver is 999 so there's 7.5 percent copper roughly to so make the it best of the best though is sterling silver that's what you're gonna want for jewelry grade Oh man, I thought it was like pure silver. And it's it's, it's good soft. shit. Yeah, it's good shit. I mean, for what it's used for, but uh, 
yeah. Like, uh, what do you call those concho belts and shit? I thought that's what they were using. Um, yeah, still even then, um, it's just, it's super, super soft. It doesn't take much to, to, to fuck it up. And the pure silver is expensive, is it? Uh, I think it's like $23 an ounce right now. Oh, shit. The little rounds that I got, or they like market wise, be like 26 bucks because it's an actual, like, uh, silver ounce. I thought I brought them up. Did I bring them up? No, I didn't bring them up. Shit. So if we wanted to make a silver bullet, you could do that to kill a werewolf. Uh, I've got a, a <laughs> silver, a silver, uh, forty caliber that was to represent what went through my leg. Except mine's a hollow point because they were a bunch of amateurs and used target ammunition. Had they used a hollow point, I wouldn't be sitting here telling you this oh, story. Shit, dude. But they used a hollow point right here, and it exploded. And I've got little pieces of it everywhere in me. Thankfully, they didn't use it here because my brachial artery and all the shit that's right here could have been a game over as well. So, hmm. fuck. So, can you make pennants like little? Uh, I'm I'm still my next lesson is uh, lost wax casting. So I'm I'm still kind of in my infancy of it, but uh, I've I have it's consumed my life. <laughs> Uh, everything's kind of been put on the back burner between this, the music even got put like on the back burner, but I, I, I've got too much invested in it. I've got to bring it out and it's what makes me happy. I've got a, a little new side project called dangerous relative. That's a little kind of rock and roll punk rock, hardcore kind of thing. Uh, just trying to keep throwing shit at the wall till something sticks. That's all we can do, huh? Yep. Fuck yeah, dude, man, that's so fun. So where where does he? He has like, what is he looking for an apprentice for? Like, he wants you to like. <sighs> he's uh, he's. I'm not gonna say he's an older gentleman, but uh, he's he's getting up there in years. And this is what I've gathered is that he wants to to pass it on to somebody that's gonna take it seriously, and wants to build kind of a, a communal kind of art collective, if you will. Um, uh, he's a musician as well, uh, a writer. Uh, he gave me a short story the other day, uh, entitled "Worms," about it. Just a little short story about a grandpa and a boy fishing, and, and uh, it really kind of reminded me of you know I never really fished with my grandpa because my grandpa was dead before I was you know really cognitive, but uh, uh, it just kind of reminded me of growing up in Montana fishing, you know. But um, you like Yellowstone? Huh. You like the show Yellowstone? I've never seen one. Uh, okay. <laughs> no. Have you ever heard of a man named Stephen Ranella? No. Yeah, he's a hunter. He has a podcast. It's a cool, dude. Okay. Check him out. He's from Montana. Or he lives in Montana. I think. Yeah. It, it, eventually, I'd love to move back there. But Montana, like, where I grew up was a really small town. And we had our own business. And, I mean, it was a... a it was a campground, but we also depended on like monthly rentals, which was more or less just like a little trailer park in one section. You know what I mean? And they were good people. It was mostly like elderly people that would either come winter it out or, or snowbird or whatever, you know? And, but like the mine shut down, there was another mine that they had reopened and they were, they were running like the, the tailings for the gold which like from the, the old dredges back in the day only got like a certain percentage. So other mines have gone back and, but it, it, there's just nothing there. I'm not a sheep rancher. I've really got no business cattle ranching. I mean, I, if I had the capital and, and you know, the opportunity, I'd definitely give my hand in it, but that's definitely not something you just go do nowadays. You know, unfortunately I could go get a job on a, on a ranch, you know, maybe, but, the winters are real brutal up there and the cost of living is, I mean, you get kind of spoiled living in Lubbock because the cost of living is uh, bad. Yeah, ass sheep here. is fucking it. Yeah. Don't tell everybody. Fucking Fuck figure it out. All these fucking, All them Austin people are uh, moving over here. All the here. Californians moved to Austin. They right. said, fuck Austin, they're going to come here. <laughs> Lubbock's cheap as shit. It doesn't fucking, don't have any traffic, 15 minute wait anywhere. You say that. <laughs> I noticed a difference in traffic in the last few years. Although it is only 15 minutes. It used to be only five fucking minutes, <laughs> god damn it. And now it's fucking 15 minutes, dude. I can't wait till that outer loop opens. That's going to 
clear it's, some well, things yeah, out. Well, yeah, I can't either, but it's bullshit because we work out there. So, like, they're constantly under construction. Well, over there. well and I think uh, another reason why they're building that is because all the bit like HEB, like all that area, all the people that live out west could get to it a lot quicker. Because I don't know. I mean, ha- have you been like rush hour during like between 98th? In 82nd, like, yeah, traffic, that's what I'm like, saying, traffic, bro. That's what I'm saying. It takes fucking rough when I get off late from work. It's like, oh, god damn, especially like in the lights, like, you'll be stuck for like, and then, f- like four rounds of and lights. Nobody knows how to drive in this shit, so it sucks. It's like, I was born in this rain, molded by it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the I guess, fuck out of my way, my Tahoe. <laughs> I guess you're right, brother. It's my Tahoe's paid for. These people ain't ready for it. <laughs> Shit, my car is paid for. I'm like, fuck, that makes me more scared. <laughs> like, fuck no, that. The know. rain doesn't bother me. I, I've grown up in it so much. Oh, the rain. Yeah. No, I'm not talking about the rain. You know, people out here can't drive where the fuck as it is. Yeah, that's what I'm throw, saying. Throw right? some elements in the mixture, and that's just fucked. So. Is it true that Montana at one time didn't have a speed limit? No speed limit and no open container law that's, as that's, well. That's wild. Yeah. My my dad, uh, adopted dad, David, uh, I remember we were coming back from a wrestling tournament and he got a VO and Coke for the road and he didn't turn his brights off passing a a sheriff and the fucking sheriff pulled us over and he said, Hey man, you know, fucking flash him. He said, man, you know, I didn't mean to. And and he said, well, the real reason I'd stopped a person had been killed on that stretch road, like a couple of weeks prior. And he's like, the only reason I'm because somebody already been killed out here da, 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 da. and ran his name. My dad didn't have his wallet. And he gave him his name. He went by David, but his first name was Gerald. So he went back, you know, back and forth between the car and came back. And he was like, oh, you're you're David out there at the campground. Oh, okay, hell yeah, man. Y'all have a good night. <laughs> just chilling with the, the fucking VO and Coke just right there. And uh, that was just like the thing. The kids could pull right up to the bar as long as the parents were there. Medieval Knievel when I was like a really? little, little fucking kid. How yeah. was that? Uh, so my biological dad we had moved to montana he'd been on the run he came out he signed the adoption papers the judge pretty much said like hey you did right by the boy go back take care of your shit don't let me catch you back out here because it ain't going to be good for you he went back uh tried to take care of his shit ended up splitting out was a fugitive came back to montana uh he was hanging out at a uh motel called the metlin it was the old train depot there in downtown dillon right on the train track a little dilapidated place but the bartender gal was she was uh re- renovating it and my dad was standing there he was banging the bartender he, he was a real ladies man fucking banged anything that walked <laughs> but uh uh anyways we were sitting there and I don't remember really how it came about, but he said, son, that right there is the coolest son of a bitch that ever hit planet Earth. And I said, who's that? And he said, that's Evil Knievel. And I'm like, oh, cool. That must be <laughs> a guy's name's Evil. It must be. I don't know who the hell he was, you know. And and, uh, and he ended up, uh, Evil told me, uh, got me a Roy Rogers. And he said, you ever had a Shirley Temple? I said, no. He said, get the boy a Shirley Temple. And he got a Shirley <laughs> Temple, and then he taught me how to play shuffle. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, God. It's one of my fun fun life facts. That's so fucking cool, man. <laughs> God he, he damn. He taught me how to play a shuffleboard. He got you a drink and he, oh yeah. my God. Roy Rogers of Shirley Temple taught me how to play shuffleboard. And shortly after the events, the U.S. Marshals came, kicked the door down, got my dad and flew him back to Washington on a Black Hawk helicopter. Wow. Yeah. What <laughs> life. Fuck, dude. Yeah. Even Knievel's cool, though. I remember when he died. His son recently died too. Robbie, Robbie Knievel. Captain Knievel, RIP, man. Yeah. Uh, it was a year ago, I think, on the 16th or the 13th. Yeah. So, you know, he, he passed in Reno, actually. It's yeah. wild. Never met Ronnie. I met, I met, I met Evil, though, that one time. Right. The best of the best. Who else have you met in your life? Fuck. Um, let me think. Ron Jeremy. When he was still cool before all the rage. Before he shit. was a yeah. horrible person. Yeah, before all the rage. How was that? Uh, so we were playing the whiskey. <laughs> whiskey go go? Yeah, we were the whiskey. I wasn't playing, Hellbound was playing. Uh, Leroy wanted Shooter's Band, but I showed up and it was my ex's birthday at the time. And we were up in the green room waiting for Shooter to show up. And Shooter and the Entourage showed up and, and Ron Jeremy was with them. Yeah. And he kind of like waddles over to. Uh, 
uh, my ex. And he's like, Hey, I, I think I met you before. She's like, no, no, we've definitely never met. He's like, no, I'm pretty sure we've met. And she's like, no, no, no. I, I'd, I'd remember if we met, we've never met. And they got to talking anyway. She said, it's my, somehow led it on that it was her birthday. And he had a harmonica in his pocket and whipped out the harmonica and started playing her happy birthday on the harmonica. It was, it was pretty wild. And then, uh, he's narcoleptic. <laughs> so when, you when? just like turn and look and there's Ron Jeremy just like passed out like on the side of the stage behind the stage over here over there just we'd randomly pass out and play. nice gentleman didn't give me any kind of weirdo rapey vibes but he didn't try to so Ron he did, he did Ron Jeremy did not try to rape me no fuck your ex uh, he, yeah of course he tried to I mean shit but um, oh, no that was wrong no, he no, didn't like, fuck no, her forcefully he, no, no but, but did he fuck her no no, no he definitely put the moves <laughs> on her I mean. uh, but yeah that was a pretty wild show um, yeah yeah, the uh, the whiskey was it was pretty cool, man. A pretty cool experience. Shit, damn, damn, dude. Who else you met? Anybody um, else? Let me think, man. Ron Jerry, evil can evil. That's a fucking, <laughs> that's the coolest story ever. Like two. That like is seven. a cool. That's bar none the coolest story you ever heard. Of this like fucking podcast. two seventies icons. <laughs> um, let me think. That is the. What did your dad? How did your dad describe him? Evil can evil. He's like that's the coolest. Cool, I don't say coolest motherfucker, cool son of a bitch. He's like coolest dude. Whatever. He's like that. That right there is the coolest dude to ever walk the earth. I think, I think he might be right. There, like, there might be a few others, but <laughs> God damn. Uh, Billy Joe Schaefer. That was a cool, damn. He that's was a cool one. I don't even know who that. Something like that. The wacko from Waco. Um, he, uh, you seen the Squid Billies? I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah, he did the the intro song to that. He, uh, uh, honky tonk heroes. He so Honky Tonk Heroes. It's Waylon Jennings' album. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. He uh, he wrote the entire album. Yeah, pretty much told. Oh, he Waylon recently to, just died. Yeah, yeah, he died recently. Yeah, I met Billy Joe. He was super nice. He shot a dude in Waco, and I, I asked him about it, and he kind of gave me some fishing story. I, I fully believe one hundred percent he meant to shoot that man in the face one hundred percent. Uh anyways, that's just my theory on it. I could be totally wrong. Um I met the dude. I, I made him cheese sticks in Shreveport, the dude that uh played JP and Grandma's boy with the robot legs. I met him. I, I cooked him some food. Um the one who does the robot voice? Yeah the the, the so long, losers. Yeah, that guy, uh, <laughs> I love that movie. Um, Anna Paquin in passing. Uh, Selma Hayek in passing. Oh, she's beautiful, isn't she? Uh, she's, I don't know if she is, but she was a member, might still be, of a cult called the Church of Ramtha, the School of Ramtha. It's the School of Should Ramtha. Should we be saying this right now? Uh, yeah, Jay-Z Knight, she, uh, Peter Fonda's son i believe was also a member but uh yeah out in little old yelm washington where i moved uh, my sophomore year as a, a cult and uh grew up with a bunch of cult kids but selma hayek was out there what year is this uh let me think 2003 ish it was yeah, this cult maybe called not, maybe the we're... school of ramtha <laughs> yeah maybe we should not school be saying this because this is before like yeah she claimed but, that... she is before she married the billionaire uh, yeah, I, probably. I, I don't know. Um, but like, I, I, there wasn't like any kind of interaction. It was just like, hey, like you know, and, you weren't stunned by that beautiful was, fucking woman, man. Uh, that was those beautiful boobs, extremely short, shorter than I imagined. But she short little Mexican woman. Um, who else, man? But yeah, I, I didn't really meet him. It was just like a like an in passing type thing. I, I, I none of these stories compare to yours. Oh, but, so that shit's in Washington? Yeah. What, what uh, yell? No, yeah, Ramsey oh, School hear. of Enlightenment. Yeah, Jay Z Knight. She's what fucking. What did you said? She, she's out. Okay. I don't, I don't know why. Because he said so, Jay Z Knight. This makes sense why she's married to a billionaire, actually. The, no, okay. So the people that go there, <laughs> that go to this, you can't be broke and go to this. These these you aren't see? just like people off the street. These are doctors and lawyers. Makes and sense why she's married. Lots and lots of money, and they come from all over the fucking world. I met people from New Zealand, uh, South Africa, uh, Australia. I mean, not that's like same place. I mean, not the same place, but same area. But yeah, all over the world. I would and, like to uh, go to New Zealand. Uh, my soon-to-be brother-in-law is is from there, and my sister and him are talking about possibly relocating. So, from New about, Zealand, yeah. Hmm. That's cool. Uh, yeah, man. Wild shit here and there. Damn. 
let me uh, let's take a break real quick. I have to piss again. Man, my bad. Personally, heated that uh, whoever fucking was in charge let the Cotton Club get turned into a goddamn game room. Is that what happened to it? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> There's enough game rooms. Like fucking leave. That should have been a, a historical landmark. Really should have. In my opinion, honestly. <clears throat> that pink place, right? Mm-hmm. They, they, yeah, it's, it's blue. It was blue. They painted over all the paint and everything, man. Like. Fuck. At least leave the fucking original. Can you scoot up. So oh, we can sorry. Hear you. There you go. Mm. I just made sure we could hear you. <laughs> yeah, that was like the only place where black musician black musicians could play rock and roll. That's why it was outside Lubbock. Because it was outside of the city. Limits. Yeah, you couldn't do that shit inside Lubbock. So I mean, hell, like Mm-mm. little Ri- weird thing. I mean, huh? little Richard got arrested in Amarillo because he was black and playing rock and roll. Just how it was back then. I personally believe that, like, Little Richard and Ray Charles and Chuck Berry, I think that they did more to break down racial barriers than than any Martin Luther King or Malcolm X ever did. Not not saying that their roles weren't important or more pivotal than, by any means. More but, than Jackie Robinson? I mean, definitely. The, the, the people that were, that were out there, you know, not saying by any means that they, they weren't, you know, doing what they were doing. But uh, but the, the, like putting you know bringing it to the attention that they could break down those those types of barriers and know. stereotypes. Yeah, I don't know much about Ray Charles, but I know like Little Richard and uh, Chuck Berry. No, like what they did. Yeah, man. Right. And 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 then the influence they have on all the guys that I like. Oh yeah. You know they had influence on everybody. He might have been their first rock star. Who? Little Richard. I mean, he's the archi- let he's me the architect it. of rock and roll. No, let me said it, so that's why I said that. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> let me said it, so if let me said it. That's I'm, exactly I'm, why I said yeah. it. Yep. <laughs> let me's God, baby. Let me talked a lot about um, Buddy Holly too. There's a lot of videos of him co- covering his music. It's pretty interesting him talk about the Beatles compared to the Rolling Stones. Mm-hmm. They were the pretty boys. Yeah. The art school. And <laughs> I guess there's like a big divide in England. I don't know. Those, the scouts. Well, I mean, like Liverpool, like I guess to them, like when you hear like the Beatles talk compared to like someone from actually from London, it's different. Like that's kind of considered like out in the country. Because uh, I mean, it, it is a different accent. And then you talk to someone from London that's very proper. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like Stevie Ray Vaughan? Absolutely. Ooh, my boy. Yep. There's a lot of history with him here in Lubbock, too. Like Stubbs, like he would come over here and he would sleep on the stage and play music for beer and, and barbecue. Yeah, Ray Wiley Hubbard uh, gave me his book. And, uh, oh, shit. Uh, it, it, he, he's got a couple stories in there. Uh, it's Ray Wiley Hubbard's A Life Well Lived. Can you look uh, that up? That's a damn that fine guy? read. Like, <clears throat> if how are you, you me? How how are you in these positions? Like, if you don't mind me asking, show up. You just show up. Show up. You got to put yourself. You got man. You got you, to get your bird way. You got to put your bird out there, man. I guess you know, you know what I mean. You got that's fucking that's show the fucking up. right there. What you up, just said mm. is the epitome of this podcast. Yes, you, you up know? against the wall. Fuck. Redneck. Uh, a life well lived is, is it's kind of like an autobiography. He gave you this book. Yeah, he wrote a phone number in it and said, "Call it if I ever get in a bad way." I don't know. I've never called it. I, that's a bit intimidating for Call me. Call it right now. <laughs> is this guy still alive? Hell yeah. Yeah, he's still alive. Call it right now, bro. All right. <laughs> Just don't do that. Don't waste it on <laughs> this podcast. Bro. Have you ever met? Um... Like Gary P. Nunn, Joe Ely. Who's no. Joe Ely? Who's this? He's the one that's from here. He was uh, in the Flatlanders. Oh, yeah. Okay. The Clash really, really, really like uh, Joe Strummer. Really, really looked up to Joe Ely. That's what's crazy is like mm. a lot of these guys that are like huge. We're all influenced by people from here. Yeah. Me, as we say, love was here too. As we say, all roads lead to Lubbock, and I'm starting to really fucking believe that. God damn, all roads really do lead to Lubbock. Jesus Christ, especially because of Buddy Holly. Yeah, of course. But 
Yeah, meatloaf. Yeah, I, I was. I, I found that out from the Breakfast House when the, we. Well, were, he went to LCU, didn't he? Yeah, uh, it was Luth. Who? Uh, oh, meatloaf. Yeah. 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 Oh, what's that dude? John Daly? Not John Daly. Uh, John Denver. Yeah, John Denver. Yeah. yeah. He went. He went to Tech. He was from Roswell. That's an interesting little town, man. Yeah. You ever been out there? Yeah. I, I've been through it. I didn't get to every by the time I got I bought a van out there and and was driving know. back and everything was closed by the that time you I got came that, back uh, to the Leatherman, yeah. yeah. Out of that mystery van. I don't want to get steer this podcast in that direction, but I've been getting a lot of the UFOs recently. E- more than more than I have and Roswell's an interesting place. It's an interesting place, I'll say that. Apparently there's a cr- Apparently, there's a crash site out there. Yeah, I I, I don't know. And they say uh, that the aliens donated it to us, and they crashed it out in Roswell, which is what three four hours from here. Yeah, that ain't far. And then they were shooting off nukes three four hours from here too. So, right. what a fucking interesting town love is when you think about it. Yeah. I've talked to Roy about that. It's like. We had to get like nuclear poison, right? I mean, all the wind blows <laughs> from, you know, blows from the west. So right. I would think some of those particles had to reach over here. So, so sure. fucking backwards, right? Fucking <laughs> retarded, <laughs> Jesus. But so, how, so do you literally just put yourself in these positions to meet these people? Man. I mean, obviously, like evil could even you were a baby, but this guy you just said with the book. To be honest with you. Uh, it's mostly been, I guess, dumb luck. I, I, I don't, don't believe I don't, in that. So that's I, what I'm I saying. don't know. Right place at right time, I guess. Um, but for this man to give you a book, did you have to strike up a conversation with him? How did it work like that? So with uh, we had uh, well, with Leroy Hellbound Glory when I, I first met him, I think it was South by 2011. I didn't make it 2010 because that that'll be an article you can pull up. And that's a fun one. Uh, anyways, well, but 20, 2011, um, I believe it was 2011 is when Leroy introduced me to shooter. And, uh, uh, so it was Roger Allen Wade, Hellbound Glory, Ray Wiley Hubbard, uh, Billy Joe Schaefer and shooter Jennings at, uh, Treadgill's down in, down in Austin. And, uh, that's where I met up with them. And uh, had some really good herb, and uh, they wanted to smoke, and they smoked some, and they asked if I could get some more, and I said, fuck yeah, and I called a dude that uh, was a big player with the Silk Road and the Dark Web. Dark Web, huh? Yeah, yeah, and that's where he was getting all of his exotic shit from, and, and uh, he broke it down, and he was like, wow, I don't even understand this, and I don't even know if I want to, because this sounds like all bad. <laughs> but uh, we were sitting on the honeysuckle rose uh, with Willie's tour bus because he, he loaned it to Shooter or one of them because there's like a fleet of them. But uh, it was the the honeysuckle rose and dude comes up and he, uh, he's like, you sure I should do this, man? Like, yeah, just knock on the door and brought us some herb. And then it was just kind of on after that. But yeah, it just so happened to just show up, I guess, and be at the right place at the right time. Fuck. Uh best and and i I think i i might have a little bit of an edge on it from just working in show production for so long working behind the scenes uh like my my first gig that i ever did was uh uh day after hurricane katrina and that was uh it was pearl jam maybe it was dave matthews i think it was pearl jam was the first gig i ever did but then tom petty was shortly after that tom petty and uh but you just you see how the dynamics of a show works front door the back door you know put yourself in like the local position i guess and and just wait to see who pops up and sometimes you might be surprised but again like you got to be able to put yourself into that position to get out there you know Uh, you got to put yourself in the position to put yourself in the position huh yeah yeah Oh, uh, it was cool on. when we met Charlie Crockett. Hell yeah. I wasn't going to bring that up. But yeah, we met Charlie Crockett. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like that guy? Yeah. Um, you know, I I uh, haven't listened to a lot of his music. Uh, good partner of mine. He's really, really into him, and, and he got to meet him as well. Um, but uh, I, I've listened to some stuff. I, I do enjoy it. Um, 
I don't know. I, I was going to go try to check out that blue light thing, but I had family in town and it was just a bunch of shit was this, that, and the other. And it just didn't, the stars didn't align. But if I had the chance, I absolutely would have gone and done that. Cause that sounded cool. As that's hell. where we so, met him. Yeah, that. yeah. That's, that's badass. And that's really cool that he came up here to do that. And we've got some badass shows coming. I mean, with clutch coming to town, that's, that's going to be awesome at the garden and with, I'm not clutch. I yeah. just I was watching Viva La Bam. Yeah, clutch is coming. And to town. they like clutch. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we had to check that one out. When is that? Uh, yeah. May. We might have to go with you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't drink, man. We like to drink. Hey, I, just because I don't drink, I mean, I'm, 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 say you don't but drink, people. Like, well, I just don't know if you would vibe with us because we like to drink. So oh, nah, like, you, you know what I mean. Vibe. Oh yeah, I'm saying like because when we can all gather together in pregame, that's what I meant, my man. We'll go with you if you want us to, but, uh, <laughs> if you let us. Do you like Culture Wall? Uh, I I got to meet him uh, as well. What the fuck at, at the Blue Light? Um, very very nice gentleman. Um, the again, I, I kind of thought he was going to be a little taller, but uh. The, the voice, man, that voice just that goes That voice on. is something different. Isn't it? May 7th, clutches at the garden, May 7th. Oh, yeah, they got yeah. a clutch. That's what it is. But he's he's from uh, Saskatchewan, which is the, 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 the territory of Saskatchewan is a lot like rural Montana in places. And it's the same kind of like Poulter Wall. That, that's a cowboy motherfucker right there. A lot of people might just think he's that's a cowboy and motherfucker. And... Uh, uh, no, I, I don't know him personally, but you know I do follow him. Uh, my uncle—he's not really an uncle, kind of a cousin that was like an uncle. Rick Guylander—he's a saddle builder up in Alberta, cowboy motherfucker as well. But uh, yeah, the, those those Sask Saskatchewan area—that that's 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 like the Texas of Canada. That area of the, the the Alberta area. That's a lot of oil, a lot of cowboys, a lot of natives, a lot of <clears throat> that's that's definitely not your your coastal I and that's where he's from there. yeah he's from i've seen a lot of alberta license plates over here for some reason snowbirds yeah what, I, is, that? what is it they 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 come down in the winter because <clears throat> it's it's warmer it's warmer down here than it is you know i got a few friends there. who are actually canadian i call them the canadian uh-huh yeah yeah, because I guess that might be where they've room. They could be Mennonites as well. No, well, no, they, well, they work with them, but they're right. not. Well, I I have read up that besides Californians, the next group of people that move over here are Canadians. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I I I personally I've got no say in politics because I'm a convicted felon, so I'm I'm part of the 19 million and, and rising uh, people that don't have rights to vote in this country which is kind of fuck shit because that means we're all getting taxed without representation. But all those uh, fucking millions of people coming across the border can come over and vote. Sorry. Yeah. yeah all right. uh, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> whoops. No, it's the Modelo uh, talking. Whoops. No, uh, uh, there's, there's a whole lot of people that, <clears throat> you know, uh, are Canadian, conservative Canadian. And they're, they align themselves more with the conservative American than they do with their current leadership. So, I mean, I. Yeah. Mm. Communist Trudeau. Man. Yeah. That last UFC, they were all chanting fuck Trudeau. <laughs> Shit made my dig hard. I mean, I just, <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to get political. No, Canada's like, it was what best said, man. Canada's like the fucking, the, the, the apartment over the really loud party you know keep it down hey you know keep it down down there hey. <laughs> their their trailer park boys fucking got weed and fucking moonshine our trailer park boys got crystal meth and fucking unregistered ars and glocks with switches like <laughs> we're not the same do you like the show <laughs> trailer park boys uh, reminds me that okay so that and shameless both remind me of growing up that's what you <laughs> like, yeah, like, like shit like that like my dad bless his heart we hadn't had a family outing in a long time. It was my brother and I. So we're going to meet Chief Otto, my my uncle. We call him Chief Otto because the Indian with the most cars wins. If you've ever been around an Indian reservation, you get that joke. Anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways, so he's like, we're going to go see Chief Otto. So we, we go take off. He ends up turning into a side mission for him to get crack and uh, gets fucking all cracked out. Where was I going with this? 
what was I talking about? Trailer Park Boys and Trailer Park Boys. Yeah, no, totally. And uh, that was just like my dad. And they used—I don't know if you remember. It might be a little bit before your time. There used to be a drink, and they might not have been down here. They were called Tilts. It was like a—it was like a hard energy drink, and you could get them for like eighty-nine cents. They were like six, seven percent, but it had like ginseng touring. It would get you all kinds of fucked up for a couple of bucks. You could get you know a couple of them. And, we get in my dad's old Toyota van, had a cooler in the center console there so he could put his sixer in there. Some bitch. Yeah, we take off hauling ass across town, like going the opposite direction where we're supposed to go. Like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, oh man, tilts are usually 89 cents. They're 79 cents over here. So we burned $7 <laughs> worth of gas to go over and save, you know, $4 and 12 cents. I've done something similar like this, so I yeah. will not say nothing yeah. to that. <laughs> you do things. You yeah. know, things it makes sense, you know, at the time. So we're driving and we pull over to get some food and he's just slamming these tilts and this fucking like pile of cans is amassing. And I'm just in the, I'm kind of roasting him the whole time. Like, Hey, what are you doing with those old man? What you going to do with them? He's like, well, what happens if we get pulled over? He's like, oh, I've got to figure it out, boy. I got to figure it out just like this. I'm going to put them on the inside of my jacket. And when I step out, I'm going to kick him underneath the van real quick. And he's not looking. Like, how the fuck do you think that's going to work? I don't know. I've only had dry runs, quote unquote. Like, I've only had dry runs. Like, this was like his thing. Like, this is legitimately going to work. So we pull into a jack in the box. We get some food. We're outside smoking. We go inside to finish our food. And we hear the sound of what sounds to be like, I don't know, 12, 14 fucking tilt cans getting kicked across a parking lot. And here's my old man killing and out the fucking van, kicking these cans across the parking lot to the point where other patrons are looking at him like, dude, what are you doing? Shit, you not. He goes like this. <laughs> puts it up. So he puts his jacket up so people can't see him. And he's kicking cans across the parking lot. That's like some Rickyism shit if I've ever seen. <laughs> like, dude, that was my fucking life growing up. Bro, I know it's like TV and shit, but fucking Trailer Park Boys was <laughs> it's like, home. Yeah. It's comforting. That first season. <laughs> When they have a shootout <laughs> in the grocery store, I wish I could like erase my memory and watch it over and over for the first time again and again. Cause that was the greatest shit I've ever seen in my life. I love that show. Like the first eight seasons, anyways. <laughs> Fuck, I love that show. So, uh, damn. Shameless, too, was good, though. Yeah, Frank, uh, Frank Gallagher, that was my dad. Peter Hawkins, really? Frank Gallagher, Peter Hawkins, same guy. Same uh, fucking guy. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if he's actually not really dead. Like if he just faked his death. So I wasn't. So I was on the road when he passed away and he died on my birthday in 2016. Fucking waited for my birthday to check out. And I was at a friend's house in Overland Park, Kansas. And I had some dreams. I knew he'd been sick. He'd been sick for a long time. And uh, was sitting in, in bed. I was asleep and I had dreams of him. My brother, Michael and I fishing at this lake that we used to fish at when we were little, little kids. And I woke up and he was sitting at the edge of the bed. I was like, Whoa, what the fuck? And said, uh, Hey man, I just want to say, I love you. And I, I checked out. I appreciate you. And that's how he ended every conversation with me. It was appreciate you. And, uh, he just kind of vaporized into the abyss, I guess. That's a know? dream you had. I don't know if it was a dream, the drugs or whatever. I don't know. Uh -huh. uh, to this day, I don't know. But I kind of like came to, woke up like, what the fuck? Like, that was weird. And then uh, my brother called and I was like, hey, what's up, man? He said, hey, man, I just called to say happy birthday. I said, man, I appreciate that. He said, man, I got some bad news. I said, don't worry about it. He goes, what do you mean? I said, he, he already told me. I said, what do you mean? He said, he checked out this morning. I was like, yep, sure did. Yeah, he was here. He told me. So yeah. we, had a, we had a weird connection, man. But uh <clears throat> Nice. All of them are doing that every time I open one of them. It's all good. It's that market. It's that market <laughs> street Lone Starlight. What's the last time you had a beer? Uh, I really didn't drink a whole lot of beer. So oh, you, yeah, you, you want to talk about crazy alcoholic shit? Here's here's a little fun fact in my little alcoholism. I didn't want to come off as an alcoholic, so I would buy my liquor in airplane bottles, like dollar piece. You know, like no big deal you know, seven or eight trips back to the fucking liquor store, $40 fucking later, you know, like, Hey, you know, no big deal. I could have just bought the half gallon, but I didn't want to have the half gallon because that would be an alcoholic. But you know, if I just from stream a little bottles, no, no problem. Uh, did get to the point where I could buy the, the cheap, uh, half gallons and filter it through the Brita filter and make it a little, uh, more bearable to drink. But, uh, yeah. You'd filter it through a bit of the Brita filter. I've never heard this. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> 
Yeah, there's a charcoal filter in there. Hmm. Yes, sir. Huh. Never ever in my life have ever <laughs> heard that before. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> shit you do when you're drinking. It seems normal at the time. Uh, so COVID was one of the best things to happen to my alcoholism because I, you wore a mask. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I've been fucking drinking all morning. I'm going to work, put my mask on, do my thing. You know, and I, nobody knew the difference because I fucking had a mask on. But yeah, no, I, I ended up going down a really dark road and uh, just destroying my life with it. Like alcohol's, you know, totally fine if you've got a grip on it. But I, I, I let it take over the place of opioids in my life and just led down a really dark path. I was about to ask you, what's like the strongest thing, like the hardest yeah. thing to quit? Nicotine. <clears throat> That's what I've been telling God you. Damn nicotine, bro. I, I still haven't. Guys it's got me licked, man. Um, the opioids, Lemmy said it best, is it makes you a victim. And if you've ever dealt with anybody in the midst of an opioid addiction, it's a fucking victim mentality. And, and bless their hearts. I've been there. I've been, and you know, I've come out on top of it, but looking back at it, yeah, it makes you a victim. Speed doesn't do that. Speed will absolutely rob your soul and everything of you if you let it, but it doesn't like get you sick and hooked off the bat. Like the heroin, it, you either love it or you don't. It's like a circus peanut, those little fucking circus peanut candies you either love them or you hate them <laughs> and uh it's the same thing you like when i did it the first time i was like this is what i've been missing this is it like does everybody know about this this is a fucking you know 1920s all over the place got energy feeling great you know the, hello my old friend my warm blanket come here you know and and then and then it just becomes a monster and uh you know um <clears throat> but uh it's it's one of those things man that you really have to hit the point of you wanting it more wanting to live more than anything else because you just get to that point you start jamming needles in your arm every day it's fucking depressing you know you start looking like shit you're not eating probably not bathing you know you probably kicked out of every fucking house when you get to that point You've probably sold off every fucking possession that you got some people can maintain a habit and, you know, live a functioning life. I am not one of those people. So I know where it, I know where, where my battles lie and where they don't. Unfortunately, I'm just not made out. It's not my DNA. Other people, maybe, but me. So of all that, though, nicotine was the hardest. Nicotine, man. I'm still on that shit. It's, yeah. it's a motherfucker. And these new vapes. I, I think the Chinese are putting some shit in this to make it more addictive. Because, They're fucking us, bro. Because uh, I've never, like. Quitting a Marlboro, I never had cold sweats, nightmares, waking up fucking looking for the damn thing, and yeah. You do that on, you've had that on vape? Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, got a great I've point. switched to an American brand because I've got this conspiracy theory that they're, they're putting some sort of hair on in the fucking, the Chinese juice. It's so. probably true as fuck. Whatever. Have you ever heard of that shit, like the opium shit that they had in the 1900s? Mm -hmm. Look it up, people. It's crazy. I got some opium from Ugh. some guys from Portugal at South by. I don't feel there. comfortable saying this, but I want to <laughs> say it anyways. I would like to try opium. <laughs> I don't want to say it because of what you just told us about your life, but fuck, I want to try that shit. I, I've only had real opium once, and I got it from a Portugal and guys from Portugal in a, a outfit called Olive Tree Dance. Could you hit the olive tree dance there? Very, very talented individuals. Dude was on a didgeridoo and like was making like organic dance music. Yeah, these guys were fucking cool. I traded them, uh, traded them some herb for uh, some hash or not hash. It was it was opium, and uh, yeah, it was really cool. Like we were at South by, and we got a, a real we we showcased, but we actually had like a. <clears throat> a real like showcase showcase and it was the first time i'd ever seen them they had these bracelets that they like locked on like you know you get your like show bracelets and whatever the little oh, clippy yeah. thing but these had like a special like extra clippy that wouldn't come on you had to like pick it to get it off or cut it off but it had a little chip in it and there was artists only like lounges and this is where i found my love for vodka and mountain dew was uh <laughs> thank you tito's uh yeah. They, they just have these spots for artists and just go flash that little thing. They'd let you in free fucking drinks, booze, food, fucking all over and met these gentlemen here. And they're like, Hey man, you got any buds? And I was like, hell yeah. What you got? You got this trips, acid, opium. It's like, 
Bingo. <laughs> what you want? What you need? Let's get it on. Very nice gentleman. Great guys. Shout out all of Tree Dance. Was that being nice? It was great. Yeah. <laughs> I'd definitely do it again. But I don't think we can really get it in this country without it being a muddled down black tar version of it. <clears throat> but, yeah. You said vodka and Mountain, Mountain Dew. Dew. Never heard that one. Yeah. But sometimes Tito's hot, is a Texas cool. thing, right? Oh. I mean, it's hardly a vodka. I mean, really, if you want to get I mean, technical, it's a grain. They're, they're it's, a grain. Brand. it's made in Austin. Yeah, Texas yeah. Brand, right? yeah, it's an Austin brand, but it's not a vodka. It's a grain alcohol. Shots fired, Tito's. You know what else is a Texas brand? Tech brand? Yeti. Shots of my boys at Yeti. Dang it. They graduated from tech. Moved to Austin and created Yeti. <laughs> Shout to flex that out before, I, before we oh, end this yeah. podcast. Dude, this was a fun one, man. You, you, you gave us a lot of cool shit. The album, what's the album called again? Uh, Hard Times. Hard Times. Yeah. J- January 31st. January 31st. I've got a show coming up opening for uh, Mac Lethal and Gorilla Nims down in Hobbs, presented by Trouble Loke. I've heard about this guy with, so, from Mike G. Yeah. So uh, it's definitely a lot of cool stuff coming up. Uh, really appreciate the time and coming out and being able to shoot the shit man. let's do it again sometime brother. Hell yeah. you want yeah. to hell yeah hell yeah part two Brado, you got anything no i'm good thank you Nothing. guys <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next time man appreciate you coming on snake pit one love brother